Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to the shop. Today we're going to be working on a couple slabs. Now I was up at Matt Cremona's place again recently and he had two more slabs from the same tree that I got for the table we did last year. So I'm going to be making two different desks and we're going to be making them about eight foot long, massive desks, bent lamination, lots of fun things in here. But first we have to address these slabs and get them cleaned up and flattened so we can then put a base on them. Let's dive in. Welcome to Slab Mecca. This is Matt Cremona's backyard and he has a pile of slabs. Uh, this is a red oak tree that he chopped down many years ago and it has been drying for many, many years in his yard. Um, actually, it was about two years ago that I came and got two slabs from this very same tree and I use them to make my dining room table, which if you haven't seen that video uh, series, uh, that, that's a cool one. I really liked how that came out. And when making the desks, I just wanted to use the same thing again. Gave him a call and he said, yeah, I got them. So I loaded them up in the minivan and we drove five hours uh, back down to deliver them. They've been sitting in my shop for about five months now, um, just drying and acclimating to the shop. And now they are to the point where I'm ready to start working on them. Before we go any farther, we need to actually find out, are these twisted? Are they bumped? Do they have anything that needs to come down? And there's always some big high spots. And so I'm gonna start by identifying those high spots where it's twisted, usually around knots and other things where it has lifted up. And I'm gonna bring in a scrub plane and focus on those particular high spots. I'm not gonna work on taking the whole thing down right now. I just want to get the really high spots down to a true level and bring everything within an eighth inch or so of flat from one spot to another. And then eventually these high spots are just going to expand and expand and expand until they cover the whole thing. And uh, you're just hitting the high spots. Don't worry about things being too low. Uh, and here this, this, uh, this piece was actually uh, flexing and later on I actually cut it off. I don't think I have footage of, of cutting these boards uh, to width. But, you know, it's cutting, so that's kind of boring. <laughs> Bringing in a large straight edge, uh, it'll allow you to see any other high spots. Here there's a knot coming up in the middle, and that just created a nasty high spot. The scrub plane takes it down rather quickly. And as you can see, that high spot just gets wider and wider until it's a large flat spot. Now I've done most of the slab at this point, and I'm just detailing things. I'm, I'm making sure that everything is twist-free. I'm moving the, the winding sticks back and forth on the board so that I can see different things from different points. And around this time, I'm going to start bringing in the jointer plane. This has a large bed on it, so it will ride over the low spots and just hit the uh, just hit the high spots. And this way, it will uh, coast over it and smooth the board out a little bit more. This is what actually brings it down into nice and flat. And this board is really, really flat. I mean, it's it's probably within about 30 seconds from end to end. Um, though that depends on the uh, uh, the the moisture and how uh, things change over time but I'm, I'm very, very happy with how I got this down. Now that we've gotten it mostly flat, I'm gonna bring in a smoothing plane and smooth this whole thing down. I'm gonna spend a good bit of time with my, my nice smoothing plane. Uh, now, one of the things I'm running into on this slab is there are, the grain is going all different directions. So sometimes I'm pushing, sometimes I'm pulling, and I'm just reading the grain and making sure I'm going with the grain. And sometimes I will plane up to one point and then I'll turn around and I'll pull up to that point. And going back and forth between the two, and just always reading the grain. And then with the, the smoother, I'm just going to come in and make everything butter clean. Uh, because I'm going to be taping this off so that we can pour epoxy into these voids. I'm just going to smooth it all down um, and, and get a clean surface for that tape to adhere to. Each side of the slab took about two and a half to three hours to flatten down. And so I had four slides to, sides to do. So this was two solid days of, of flattening work and it was well worth it. Really, um, really kind of joyful. But uh, yeah, once we get this all smooth, then we can start cleaning it up and I pull out the vacuum for this because I want to get all the dust out of this. And once I start putting tape down on this, I'm not going to have the chance to, to vacuum it out. So we're going to get out all the grooves and crevices and, and really spend some time cleaning this out. I'm going to bring in a toothbrush and a couple other scrub brushes and work into all the grain and get rid of anything that's loose. I don't want anything to float around in the epoxy. I want to make it as clean as possible. And this is, I probably spent about, uh, what, 15, 20 minutes just scrubbing and vacuuming and scrubbing and vacuuming and getting it as clean as I possibly can. Down inside all the loose knots and opening it up. Now what I did is I, I flattened this side of the board and I haven't flattened the other side yet. Now we're going to bring in our tape 
and tape it out. This is Tyvek tape, and it's what most people use for epoxy filling. Um, in the past, I've used wrestling mat tape, which I really, really like. Um, but in this case, I wanted to try out ta Tyvek tape that uh, people have really been talking back and forth. And it has some many, it has some uh, very nice things to it, in that it has a good adhesion. Um, it rips very easily. Um, it leaks just about as much as I've found with uh, with matte tape. Um, so I've I had a, a couple of little pinhole leaks on this, but nothing is uh, nothing that bad. Um, you just want to make sure that you put down several layers of it, and each layer needs to overlap with the last layer. Uh, so that you, you don't have any seams. Always tape wider than you need it to be. In this case, I have several voids that are fairly large, um, so I want to actually support the back of those. Uh, if I just put tape on them, they will sag, or that will uh, cause a point for, for leakage. I'm going to flip it back and forth and make sure that I don't have any voids on one side that are on the other side, because if voids connect with a bug hole or something like that, I need them to make sure that they're, they're actually taped on the other side. I'm going to tape on several backing boards like this, and this will actually support the tape so that it will lay flat. Uh, that way, when, uh, when I pour epoxy from the other side, it won't bulge the tape and uh, give it a chance to leak. This will support them. And as long as I don't have any leaks, I don't have any problem. Um, just make sure that uh, if you do have the board being taped down, that it is only touching uh, tape. Because if you have the board touching wood and you do have epoxy leaking out, you will actually glue the backing board to the substrate. I'm going to be using Total Boat Thick Set for this one. Uh, this is, uh, I, I really like this. It, it's a little bit faster curing than some of the other thick sets. And it mixes crystal clear once it once it dries. It is beautifully clear, and you can pour up to two inches thick. Um, so I'm I'm really really liking this. It takes about uh, two days to to fully cure and be workable. Um, and some of the other ones I've used in the past take up to three days. So I'm going to be mixing this. It is a three to one mixture. So uh, three of the the resin and then one of the hardener. Now, the, it is a little bit thicker than some of the other ones, and you don't really need to vacuum it, but I have a vacuum pot on hand, and so this just makes it a little bit quicker, so I don't have to wait for the bubbles to rise out. I can put the vacuum on here and suck the bubbles out. Uh, plus, this is always really fun. Uh, the bubbles will naturally rise out of it, um, though you might occasionally get one or two that's trapped here and there. If you do have a vacuum pot, then you just vacuum out the bubbles, and then you can pour in perfectly clear epoxy that is really nice. Oh, and I love it when you release it and all the bubbles just disappear. Happiness. <laughs> so now we want to take this back over and we're going to pour it in a couple different stages. Uh, we're actually going to pour just a little bit in the bottom of every void and hole. And what I want to do is I want to let this cure and set. Um, and that will, that will fill any cracks. So if there are any leaks, this will fill those leaks so that nothing comes through in the future. Uh, it just puts a, a bottom layer in there. In the table, I actually did this um, with the first layer of epoxy. I put some tint in it so you could actually get a blue bottom on this one. Um, none of the voids in this one are big enough to really see all the way through, so I'm not going to tint the bottom one in this one. I'm just going to put in, uh, in this case, it was about two liters that I poured in as a base coat. And then I can come in and uh, pour the rest of it. And it was about a gallon, uh, so just over a gallon in each of the, the slabs. Um, and we can pour them all in and fill it up, let them sit, and once it is cured, we can peel off the tape. Uh, one of the things I wasn't as happy with the Tyvek tape is that it, it just it tears too easily. Um, so I, I, I'm kind of 50-50 on Tyvek tape or... Uh, matting tape. Uh, some people really like it, some people don't. They're both very expensive tapes, um, but they both do uh, great work. The Tyvek tape is easier to put on, but harder to take off, and the, uh, the wrestling mat tape is harder to put on, uh, but much easier to take off. Once that's done, we can flip it over and flatten it down. Now, I left the top rough, um, and I spent another two hours flattening it. I didn't need to video that because I just did it all before. And then we can come in and smooth it down. And so I'm reflattening the top, bringing it all down to a uniform thickness. And then you can start to um, go into the epoxy. With a plane, you can plane epoxy, no problem. Uh, it just doesn't leave a good surface. It leaves it kind of like a, a milky and scratched up surface, so you get a lot of lines in it. Uh, but it will plane it down nice and, and clean. Then the next thing we want to do is actually come in and smooth it out. So I'm going to bring in my smoothing plane and clean it all down, get a nice clean surface on here. This isn't the final smoothing, we're going to be doing that later, but I want to get it 
I want to get it buttery smooth so that when it does come time for the final smoothing, it does not get, it is not going to take that much. Uh, for the epoxy, it's actually really nice to grab a card scraper or a cabinet scraper and sharpen it up really, really nice and get a really good burr on there. And you can clean up epoxy phenomenally well um, to the point that you can get epoxy back to clear uh, with just a bit of polishing compound after the, uh, the card scraper. And plus you get those really nice wispy um, clear white curls that come off it and yeah it's just happy <laughs> so i uh hit this whole thing with card scraper get it down nice and smooth and we're ready for the next step on this basically next time we get together we're actually going to start working on the base um, and the structure on that we have some lamination to come through in the future uh, as well as uh, a lot of joinery on this it'll be a little bit more simple than the table base but i think it will be a fun one that will fit this slab really well yay we're getting there uh -huh. two of these to do well, I'll see you for the next video. <laughs> Happy curls. So there you have it. Uh, we have these two slabs that are cleaned up. They're filled with epoxy. They're flattened on both sides. And now we can start working on putting a base on this. Uh, I, I know going into a whole video of just pouring epoxy and flattening a slabs really isn't that amazing. Uh, but I wanted to actually talk through the steps of this and what I was thinking and why we we're going this way. Uh, the next project will be starting to work on the base and doing some of the uh, joinery for that. Uh, so with some guessing, it's going to be around uh, six or so episodes long to make this whole thing. We're going to be making two of these side by side, and it is going to be a lot of fun. I'm hoping to have the plans available for this later on. Um, I'm waiting until I figure out some more of the design. Is that something I'm just going to work through? So one of these is basically a prototype, and the other one is more or less the finished project. Eight foot long, massive slab top desks, around 200 pounds each slab. So... This is going to be an incredible project. Uh, if you do have any questions or ideas or thoughts of how you think I should be doing this, let me know those down below. And we're going to have a little bit of fun with this in the future. So I hope you like this. If you did, please hit like, comment, share, subscribe, ring the bell. All those fun things really do help out the channel. And thank you for that. So that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Most people hope that they don't end up on a cold, hard slab someday. But for me, that sounds like a good time. <laughs>